What a blessed day. Omen Ma is in the house. Abo Shato Laroche. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. That's it. Joy, welcome. God's will. Evangelist Ebenezer. You're welcome tonight. Whoa. God is in this house. Bro Jackson, God bless you. Glory to God. If I'm a God bless you. Nelly, welcome on board. Nkem, God bless you. Thank you for connecting tonight. Le Pataro Sheteba. Oh, yes. Come on, let's go, let's go. Bameji, my grace. From Abuja. Oh, yes. If I'm a joy, God bless you for connecting tonight. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. We have every reason to be happy. God is on our side. God is on our side. Libra Tasuta Ladoshe. Glory to God. Glory to God. Maria, you're welcome. Glory. Oh, yes. Give him praise. Give him praise. Uche, welcome on board. Thank you for being a great blessing. Oh, yes, Lord, we give you praise. Yahale Baro Shato Katuse. Zombra Yaro Shete. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Uh huh. Give him praise where you are. What a faithful God we serve. What a faithful God we serve. Connect and share on your page. Welcome all those noble neighbors that are coming in to stay and watch the broadcast. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. It's a beautiful night. Achabe, God bless you. Ebele. Mercy Lord, my daughter. Kim, God bless you for connecting tonight. Kate, you're always on board. Joy Obed, God bless you. Whoa. That's it. Oh, yes. Obina. God bless you for connecting tonight. It's a beautiful night. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Chukwe Mecca Caleb, God bless you for being a blessing. Thank you so much for being a blessing to me today. 
May grace decorate your life. Merci, Ahmad Dozier. All the way from Germany. You never miss a moment here. God bless you. I'm missing you big time. Missing you big time. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Hey, my Lord Bishop. Dedem. Bishop Dr. Godwin Mado. I'm lawyer, sir. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for who you are. I appreciate you, sir. Princess. Ugoma, God bless you. I missed you. Wow. Chimwoke. Bubu, God bless you. We are on board. We are on board. We are on board. We are on board. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's roll tonight. Lord, we thank you for your presence. Make us better than what we are. Recharge our lives with your spirit tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Bring it down. Joel, God bless you. Wow. Let's roll tonight. We are dealing with attitude. <laughs> hey, the senator, I salute you. Let's roll tonight on attitude. Attitude. Get you. God bless you. Ambassador King, Pastor Prince Mercy, God bless you. Thank you for being a great blessing. The Apostle Omar Oda, thank you for being on board. I salute you. Geraldine, God bless you for connecting tonight. Why do people give you attitude? You see people with attitudes here and there. Tonight, let's look at certain things. I was with my friend Pastor Edwin Bayebo, the pastor of House on the Rock, Enugu, and he made a comment that I posted on my Facebook. And he said, a bad attitude will close your door more than curses. A bad attitude will close your door. A lot of people are haunted by bad attitude not witchcraft. Your problem is actually your attitude. Hey, Dr. Gospel, I salute you from Milan. Chipitas is on board. The pastor, I salute you. Hey, it's going to be another bomb. I tell you, Caleb. People have lost vital relationships because of attitude. People right now in this lockdown are suffering because of attitude. Attitude. Attitude simply means your posture and physical expression to people and to things. So you actually discover that attitude is a voice. Attitude is a voice. You may not speak a word but your attitude is speaking volumes. And tonight I want us to look at some scriptures. I will show you a little today. This is very, very important. Attitude, attitude. Have you had people tell, why are you giving me attitude? It means that something has changed in your behavioral pattern. There are girls watching me who are not married not because any witch is sitting on your marriage it's simply because your attitude is bad bad b-a-d bad you are filled with the holy spirit you speak in tongues you do everything but you have a bad attitude people have left your church as a pastor because of bad attitude 
people can't come close and stay around you because of bad attitude. Why is it you can't sustain a relationship one for six months? Oh, somebody listen to me today. There are people that have lost the blessings of God because of attitude. Now, let's roll. Matthew 15, 26 to 28. Matthew 15, 26 to 28. I want to show you something tonight. Please connect, connect and share. You can start a watch party. I'm on a watch party myself and I'm People are connecting through my page. Welcome, OG. Yes. Matthew 15, 26 to verse 28. I want to show you something tonight. This is awesome. This is awesome. Hey, God wants to touch you somewhere. God wants to change you to get the things you want to get. Thank you, Tizak. I thank you very much for this. Look at the scriptures. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Now, let me give you a background. A woman, the child was sick, oppressed by demons. And she came to Jesus and said to Jesus, Please, help me. I need help. She has come to the last bus stop where her problem will be solved. And she said to Jesus, Help me. Heal my daughter. And look at the answer Jesus said to her. Jesus said, It is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Actually, you know what happened there? Jesus called her a dog. A dog. But look at her answer. Look at her answer. And she said, Truth, Lord, I may be a dog. Yet, dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Oh my God. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Hey, hey, hey. Let me talk to somebody tonight. You came to Jesus. You have a need. And he looks at your face and tells you, you don't give bread to dogs. You are a dog. What will you do if it was you? Hey, what will you do if Jesus called you a dog? But listen to me. The woman said, yes, I may be a dog. But even dogs can eat from the table, can eat the bread that falls down attitude. At that moment, her attitude released her miracle. Can you imagine that Jesus himself looked at a woman and said, what I have is for children, not for dogs. Actually calling her a dog. And can you imagine that? But this woman had the right attitude. She had the right attitude. Listen, how many times have you, at the point of your miracle, lost it because of attitude? I was with a Bishop um, Humphrey Rumaka on a broadcast, and he made a comment that has still been ringing in my head. And that is, provocation precedes possession. Provocation precedes possession. That is to say, at the point of your possession you must overcome provocation. At the point of your possession, you must overcome provocation. Attitude. Can you imagine this? Attitude. She said, call me a dog, but let me get what I'm looking for. Attitude. Can you imagine how people treat things? You came just because you waited. You waited for somebody for one hour. You became angry. Fiam. You bring attitude into it. Today, you have people, you are showing attitude at the point where you need help. What kind of satanic arrogance is that? What kind of satanic arrogance is that? 
She said, yes, I may be a dog, but you have what I'm looking for. Can you help me? Oh my God. Listen to me tonight. I don't know who you are watching. You may not be able to write, but listen, it is time you deal with your attitude. Attitude is a product of pride. It's arrogance. Attitude. Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 14 to 17. I need, I need to load something in your spirit tonight. 1 Samuel chapter 1, look at 14 to 17. Hey, ah, Kalibaru Shatalabosia. Whatever you lost as a result of attitude, may grace return it to you today. May grace reposition you where you lost your position because of attitude. Are you aware that a lot of times the person with a bad attitude does not know it's a bad attitude? He thinks he's being himself. And yet, people around you are tired of you. Now, look at this. Look at this. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 14 to 17. I'm rushing tonight. And Eli said unto her, How long will thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from you. Say, look at this. A woman was barren. Her husband's wife was tormenting her with all manner of things, speaking to her. And she didn't know what else to do except to run to church and run to the altar and then stay there and begin to cry. She was talking, but she was talking in her mind. Her mouth was moving and it was the words were not coming out. She was full of sorrow. She was full of grief. And she was right there at the altar, lying down, and was speaking to the Lord, pouring out her heart. And suddenly, the high priest himself, the pastor himself, came out of his chambers and saw a woman at the altar, crying, speaking, but the words were not coming out. And look at what Eli said to her. Woman, how long will you be drunk? Put away thy wine from thee. Hey, how long will you be drunk? Put away thy wine from thee. You came to church to pray. And pastor came to tell you. When will you stop drinking? No, no, no. Let's just be realistic. If it were you, what will you do? If it were you, what will you do? Pastor came out and said, Now, <laughs> men and brethren, it means that there are people who normally come to the temple after drinking. I don't want to go there today. There are people who come to church from where they drank and they put tom tom and put sweet in their mouth so that the odor will not come out. Yet the thing comes out. There are people who come to church after drinking. Are you one of them? You know better. But look at this. A woman crying out her heart and said, Hey, Lord, help me. And here, the man who was supposed to say, May God hear your prayers. Woman, why are you so bitter? What is wrong with you? The, the good morning he said to that woman was, How long will you keep drinking? When will you leave this Oguguru? Early this morning, you're already drunk. My friend, if it were you, what will you do? Look at the reply of the woman. Attitude. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord. She even put Lord. No, my Lord. I am a woman of a sorrowful heart. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do you see attitude? Look at verse 16. Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken to. And look at the reply. Then Eli answered and said, Stop praying now. Go in peace. And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked. Say, Attitude. Attitude. No, if it were you, what will you do? 
I had an experience a few days ago. Someone was um, in labor from 1 a.m. till morning. And they sent me a text in the morning. And then in the day, I had to go to the hospital to pray with the husband to see the lady. And we were praying and praying and praying. I left my phone in the car. I were praying and praying and interceding on behalf of the woman. And she gave birth to the child. We celebrated and we thanked God. When I came back, I picked up my phone. I discovered there were several missed calls. And then I went to the message box and I saw a message. What kind of pastor are you? Why you know they pick your call? Attitude. What kind of pastor are you? Why you know they pick your call? I said, maybe I need to really explain something to this woman. I picked up the phone and I dialed that number. And she said, who is this? I said, my name is Pastor Dawn Odunze. He said, oh, Pastor. And she switched off the phone. You are the person that needs help. You called and you need help. And here you are bringing attitude. Some of us are like that. The same thing that Naaman did. You traveled all the way and came. The prophet said, well, I can't see you. He told the servant, go and tell the general. Go and wash seven times. And this woman, this man brought attitude. You are a leper looking for healing and you brought attitude. He said, how can you tell me to go and wash? And the servant said, if he told you to release all the money you have, won't you do that? This one is just go and wash. And he did that. How many times have you lost opportunities because of attitude? Listen, you, there are some of you who are, you are, you are giving your husband attitude. Darling, please, can I have some food? And then you can bring food and drop it there. Eh? Your food is on the table. It's only food you want to eat. Attitude. It's only food you know how to eat. You give your children attitude. Is there anything you can do? You are like your father. There is nothing you can do. You are just busy here scattering the whole house. Attitude. You know there are people who tell you sorry. And they say you sorry with attitude. It is better they didn't say that sorry. That they sell, that they sell the way they will say it. Oh, why are you bringing attitude? I'm talking to somebody today. Why can't you just be simple? Why the attitude? You are talking to your wife and you're talking with an attitude as if she's nobody, as if you are doing her a favor listening to her. You are talking to someone and you are, you are talking to that person as if without you, the person couldn't have been anything. So the person must recognize that you are all in all in his or her life. Iwonye. Forgive me if I'm being harsh, but the attitude is too much. You see the one that is fetching water in the house is fetching with an attitude. Uh, that's what I'm here to do now. What, uh, is it not to be fetching water for you? Attitude. You are talking to your husband and you bring attitude. Uh, tomorrow now, I'll get you the money. Is there any other thing? It's only money. I will bring it for you. Attitude. Some people even carry it to the place of prayer. Attitude. I believe I'm talking to somebody today because you have lost so much because of attitude. Attitude will close your door. Attitude will close your doors. Attitude. People relate with you as if what you're doing is their right. So you should bring it to them. Somebody is keeping quiet. You can't write, but you know I'm talking to you now. Just because you are the person that pays school fees, 
just because in this lockdown you are the person that has been bringing money and putting food on the table now is attitude you must be recognized attitude just that just because you got a new appointment and you were promoted now you are coming with an attitude we are not on the same levels again you are now giving levels attitude because you traveled to London and came back. The time has gone. Oh. Time has changed. If you go to London now and come back, we will watch you for 14 days before we come to say welcome. Attitude. I believe I'm talking to somebody tonight. People have missed, have missed their miracle at the point of miracle because of attitude. Because of attitude. I show you something. Genesis 24, 17 to 20. Genesis 24, verse 17 to 20. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I believe that this will bless someone if only you can share it. There are pastors that have lost very important members because of attitude. You feel you're the prophet and nobody can challenge you. Oh my God. Look at this. Look at this. Proverbs, to Genesis 20, 24, 17 to 20. Let me run through. Running over to her, the servant said, please give me a little drink of water from your jug. This was a man coming to look for, her, to look for a wife. And then he said, God, the person who will give me water when I ask, let her be the person that is your choice. And he saw a lady coming out. The Bible says, running over to her, the servant said, please give me a little drink of water from your jug. Verse 18. <laughs> the lady said, yes, my Lord. Let me hold it there. Yes, my Lord. A stranger. A stranger. A stranger. You are seen for the first time. You have water on your head. This is a full-fledged man. And he's telling you, give me water from your jug. A 21st century lady will say, can't you see the well? Do you know what it took me to fetch the water? You want me to bring down this one on my head and serve you? Attitude. And she said, yes, my Lord. She doesn't know who this person is. Yes, my Lord, she answered. Have a drink. And she quickly lowered her jug from her shoulder and gave him a drink. When she had given him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels too until they have had enough to drink. Chineke. Until they have had enough the bishopress, Pastor Wendy, are you seeing what I'm seeing here? Until one camel, one camel drinks 10 gallons of water. Take note. Let me, let me dissect this thing to you. 10 gallons of water, one camel. One gallon is 4 liters. 4 times 10 is 40 liters. So, one camel drinks 40 liters. Now, this man came with 10 camels. We are not talking of tap here. We are talking of going to the well and dragging water out. And she was giving to camels. She said, I will also give to thy camel until they are all filled up. 400 liters <laughs> what are you talking about of water so she quickly emptied her jug into the watering trough and ran back to the well to draw water for all the camels chai the senator you see what I'm seeing here Today, you see someone in the house, just you, 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 you swept the room 
only sweeping the room is okay for the day. You see people will stay in it. You are giving people attitude. Attitude. In this lockdown, you are just all alone. Nobody talks to you. You don't, you don't join others in what they are doing. You are on your own. Attitude. What are we talking about? That a man doesn't have the money you need, does not fit your requirement of a husband, does not mean you should insult that. Don't give attitude. Uh -uh, where is this one coming from? So you don't know your level again. You never can tell when you are talking to an angel in disguise. You see people in the house. You are giving people attitude at home. You are giving your parents attitude. Just because you fetched one gallon of water, that is attitude. Attitude will come. Let me rest. Let me rest. Let other people go and do it. I'm talking to somebody listening, watching this broadcast right now. You are watching me. Look at this girl said, do you know why? She said, I will. I will do it. You know why? Because she already had an attitude of fetching water for the lamb, for the cattle of her uncle. So it was already a part of her. Giving 10 camels water to drink was no longer anything. It has become her attitude. It has become her attitude. Why are you giving people attitude? You want to do something, you give attitude to it. You want to say thank you, you give attitude to it. You want to say I'm sorry, you put attitude to it. What are you talking about? You have not said any word, but your attitude has spoken everything. Your attitude has spoken everything. People who abuse relationships do it with attitude. They don't say anything. The relationships you have lost, the people you call and they don't answer you anymore is simply attitude. You didn't say anything bad. It was only attitude. Attitude will make you not to respond. Attitude will make you respond with, with what, what would I call it? Sir? As if you're doing the person a favor. Yet, you're the person that needs the favor. Oh, the time is already up tonight. And let me, let me share with you why a lot of people bring in attitude. There are reasons why people have attitude. Why? I'm talking to somebody tonight. Stop complaining that people don't understand you. They don't understand you because you have an attitude. Stop complaining that people hate you. They hate you because you have an attitude. Stop complaining that people don't want to stay around you. When you come in, everybody, no, everybody, there is somebody else that they, that they like, not you. It is because that person doesn't have an attitude. Change your attitude. Otherwise, you will stay longer in that situation. Attitude. Why do people bring attitude? Why, why, why do they bring on attitude? Number one, it's because of unhealthy competitions, unhealthy comparisons. When you begin to compare yourself with people, sometimes you begin to feel that these people are not even up to your class. Sometimes you begin to feel that these people, you are just doing them a favor and they don't appreciate it. Class consciousness. Unhealthy comparisons. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. If you are higher than me, it's only opportunity that God gave to you. It's a privilege. I'm talking to somebody today. Whatever situation, whatever position you have found yourself, listen, if you are the person that God has given opportunity to make money, to feed your family, don't put attitude to it to your husband and children. They don't have to respect you as God. It is just God who gave. It's an opportunity God gave to you. Stop comparing yourself. Now, this is where I am and you must recognize it. Unhealthy comparison. 
You come into church and you believe. You believe that the head of department is far below you. Why should you go and submit to somebody like that? You are the person that will advise the person on how to run the thing in the church. How to run the thing in the office. I am better than this person and they gave it to you. And then attitude comes. Who do you think you are? Unhealthy comparison. You begin to compare yourself with neighbors. You begin to compare yourself with people. You begin to compare yourself with those who have traveled and those who have not traveled. You begin to check those who have masters and those who have uh, uh, standard six. You begin to check those whose husbands are exposed and those whose husbands are local champion. And you begin to reposition yourself and you come with an attitude. See you. Don't worry. One day, monkey go go market. You know, go return. I'm talking to somebody tonight. Live whatever you are. Celebrate people around you. Relate with people around you. I'm talking to somebody tonight. Forgive me if I'm harsh, but I know. Oh, thank you, Pastor Richie. Thank you, Pastor Richie. I just read something. Don't put attitude to what grace has given to you. Oh my God, we need to paste it on the Facebook tomorrow. Don't put attitude to what grace has given to you. Oh my God. Oh my God. I am talking to somebody today. You are positioned as a leader today. It was just the grace of God. You are the leader. It's just the grace of God. Believe me, you won't be there forever. Attitude. Be careful the attitude you bring by reason of the post you now put the post you now have. I, I'm talking to somebody. You can't write, but listen to me. They just gave you that appointment. They just elected you into that position. They just gave you that contract. It has changed who you are. You are now on top. Please, don't put attitude into what grace has given to you. There are people who bring up attitude because of what I call unrealistic expectations. Expectations that you have not realized. You expected that this person will marry you and he went and married another person. Attitude will come in. You expected a promotion in the office and they promoted somebody but they didn't promote you. You, became, you come with an attitude. You expected that they would pay your salary. They didn't pay. You now start coming to work with attitude. Right? They gave you half. Your expectations were not met. And now, you expected that this person should have given you 100,000. But he gave you 10,000. Attitude. Oh my God. When the expectation you have did not come, a lot of, a lot of women are giving their husband's attitude because he didn't bring the whole money you wanted him to bring. Because he didn't pay for the Ashebi you wanted him to pay. Attitude has come. You even bring the attitude to bedroom. And that's why you will, you will lie down and face the east. And your husband will now be begging you. Mommy, because mommy, because you said, don't touch me. Attitude. Mommy, because and you're proud. Mommy, because you come Jesus scenario. You say, leave me, don't touch me. <laughs> These people that are laughing, mind yourself. I'm saying the truth. You bring in attitude to it. Just because they didn't do what you wanted them to do. They didn't give you that money. They didn't allow you to go for that vacation. They didn't allow you to go for that travel. They didn't allow you to go for that event. Now you have attitude. You have attitude. Unrealistic expectations. Hey. What are you talking about? I'm talking to someone today that your wife did not go and bring that money and give to you to go and put in your business and now you are coming with an attitude. You are coming with an attitude because you expect her to go and collect money from her father, collect money from her brother and come and give to you and because she didn't do that, you now come home with an attitude. I don't want to eat your food. I don't want to look at anyone. You go outside and they are begging for you and looking for you anywhere. You will deliberately come back late because you know they will be awake waiting for you. 
What are you talking about? Attitude. I'm talking to somebody tonight. So there are people like that. Because they didn't buy you a new phone. Because they didn't buy that phone. Because they didn't give you that money. You are not giving them attitude. Because you expected that they will introduce you to this person. And introduce you to this person. And because of that, they didn't do it. It is now you are giving them attitude. They do things you should appreciate. And you pretend as if you didn't see it. That's an attitude. Hey, you are killing yourself. Another thing that brings attitude is unresolved conflict. Unresolved conflict. When you don't resolve issues, people will now generate attitude because of it. And that's why I tell every husband and wife, resolve your differences. Don't sleep with a quarrel. Unresolved. I'm talking to somebody tonight and I want to close here. Unresolved conflicts. Unresolved conflict. I need you to settle your thing. If anybody offended you, go to that person and settle it. And stop carrying face. You see somebody in the house. You quarrel with one person. You are carrying face for everybody in the house. Is your problem? What are you talking about? Back the person that annoyed you. And come back and relate with every other person. Why do you dump every other person? Because somebody offended you. Attitude. You are in the house, you are on your own. I don't know why I keep saying this. Somebody is watching this. And you are just alone in that house. People are there but nobody relates with you. You do your own thing. You go your own way. You do what you want to do. And you are in house with people. May God help you. May God touch you this night. Finally. The things that bring attitude is circumstances beyond your control. It can bring attitude. Circumstances. You have stayed three years, four years, five years, ten years. You didn't have a child. It can make you develop attitude. And when you see people who are smiling, especially when they are carrying a child, your attitude will surface. You just go and find work and sit down one place. You expected by now you should be married. And because of that, you're not married. You're, you did you did cheap bridesmaid for someone. And the person already has two children. And here you are. When you see her, you now develop attitude. Your friend has gotten married. And you are still here. There is nobody at all not to talk of that we are engaged. You now bring attitude to you. If you go on with that attitude, no man will marry you. With joy shall you draw from the well of salvation. Because somebody disappointed you. You have withdrawn. You now come out with attitude to every other person. That's the way men behave. All women are just like this. That's the way pastors are. <laughs> Don't let circumstances. It takes one man to break your heart. It takes one man to mend your heart. Attitude. There are situations you cannot help. They are beyond your control. Leave it in the hands of God. And move on with your life. Rise. Pick up your life and move forward. I'm talking to somebody tonight. You lost your job. Now you have an attitude. You now, believe, you now feel that those who have job are arrogant. Because you love your job. You lost your job. You now come. You can't give the way you used to give before. When others give, you feel they are showing up. No. Can you drop this attitude? Can you drop this attitude? Can you drop this attitude? I want to tell somebody here tonight. Choose joy. Choose to make impact in people's lives. Come out and relate with people. There is something you have somebody needs. Be a blessing to your family. You may not be in that house forever. Don't let them be happy and do a party when you go. Your absence should create a vacuum. Your absence should not be celebrated. If it is so, there is a minus in your life. 
I am talking to someone today. Sit down and talk to yourself. Drop this attitude. Drop this attitude. I want to stop there tonight. May the God of all grace help you to be what you ought to be. We upgrade every day. We upgrade every day. We change every day. We get better every day. By this time tomorrow, may somebody in the house see you and say, you have changed. It is for your good. Father, thank you tonight. Give us the grace to be better than what we are. Give us the grace to effect the change we need to effect. Touch somebody's life tonight to be a better person for his or her family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you tonight. I believe that this word is for somebody. I celebrate every one of you watching through somebody's broadcast. A lot of people are sharing these messages. I see people that are even sharing it offline. I saw someone, some even come to me. People are sharing it to bless people. I want to say thank you. There's a bishop that has been sharing. He's not even from my watch party. I was told that by my daughter, Sensational Blessing. And there's a bishop that has been sharing the messages on his platform. God bless you, sir. That is all I can say. May your oil never run dry. There are many people that are sharing this. I thank you. Thank you for burning your data to be on this broadcast. Thank you for your time. I want to celebrate and thank every one of you that has been a blessing to me. A lot of you have been sending money for data. A lot of you are sending money and they say it's offering. A lot of you are sending money and say, somebody said to me, said, Daddy, I want to come back and give you a car. <laughs> I said it is done. I want to say it's goodwill. I didn't address a lot of things about grace. There's a grace called the grace for acceptance. You can be the best and not be accepted. Well, that's for another day. I want to say thank you for accepting me. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for believing in the ministry. I want to say every one of you that keeps connecting every night. Thank you so very much for being a part of this broadcast. I celebrate all the men of God that are on this platform. They're coming, Reverend Dr. Bosa Ijindo, Dr. Chomai Bezim. You have been so regular on this every time you're just here. I want to thank all the men of God. Pastor, um, my head is full. I don't want to call one and not, and not. Leon Quanta, my friend. I just saw your, I just saw your name here. Oh, wow. A, a camel can actually drink 100 liters of water at a city. Can you, I was saying 10 liters. 100 liters. Thank you for correct. You can now understand the kind of attitude this girl had. Oh my God. 100 liters. I didn't do my research well. Can you imagine that? Wow. Thank you, Pastor Ibrahim Abdullahi from Kaduna. Thank you, Apostle Felix Ritchie. Thank you, Apostle Omar Oda. Thank you, Ap hey, Reverend Peter Amechi, my good friend from Spain, Madrid. Thank you, hey, my own brother, Dr. Prince Imo. Oh, my God, what a night, what a night. I appreciate every one of you that's connected, my daughters, my sons, all of you that are praying for me, all of you that are sending texts to say, thank you for this broadcast. You have touched my life. I, I am encouraged. I am fulfilled. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord leave the light of his countenance over you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord give you peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. I will come your way tomorrow night, 9 p.m. 
we are right on board. Grace for family. Thank you, Grant. Grant, God bless you for connecting tonight. I don't know whether you're in South Africa or in Nigeria. God bless you, Pastor Sam. Onoha from the Lighthouse. Oh, what a night. What a night. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Praise. Iwonyenke. Mercy. God bless you. Very soon you will be sending me Euro in a big way. We give to daddy and I will also collect. Thank you for being a great blessing, a great blessing. Uche Ojuku, my old barrister. You and Ozi. Thank you, Odochi. Thank you, Chidemagada. You sent me something to make me smile. Thank you very, very much. Wow. Wow. Ozi, you can analyze. You are, you are a lawyer. You know how to analyze things. You, actually, one million liters of water. One million. And the girl was ready to attitude. It didn't mean anything. When you have the right attitude, life is not a struggle. What is a burden to others cannot be. Hey, Ufuoma, where have you been? You forgot me. Wow, good to see you. Good to see you. Yes, we are signing off right now. So you can save your data for tomorrow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Have a good night. Yes, raise the volume. Whoa. Oh. Yes, sir. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. IJ, I hail you. That new car is godly. I celebrate you. Bye bye, this senator. My regards. Greet everybody in that house for me. God bless you.